Praise God. Welcome all of you to our Sunday morning service. Thank you for joining us today. We also take this time to welcome everyone who is viewing us online. Let's begin the service with a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Father God, for this opportunity and privilege that you have given us, Father God, especially as we are in the last days, Father God, as the world prepares for war, Lord. We have this opportunity to praise you and worship you, Lord. Help us to value this, Father God. Help us to consider these things that you are doing in our lives, Father God. Lord, we know every time we come into your presence, Lord, something special happens, Lord. Something glorious happens, Lord. Something touches our hearts and our minds, Lord. We just pray and submit the entire service to the hands of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Precious Holy Spirit, may you have your way in this service. Lord, we commit the worship team into your hands, Lord Jesus. Bless them, anoint them, Lord, as they help us glorify you, Lord. Father God, as we continue the service, Lord, let your word speak very, very clear to us, Lord. We know that your timings, your plans, your purposes are so perfect, Lord. We thank you that you're going to speak to each of us, Lord. You're going to do miracles in our midst, Father God. We're not going to go back home the same today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Before I hand over the service uh, to Brother Thiru, I just want to share this and then I'll hand over to the worship team. We must always remember every time we enter God's presence, every time we get into worship, we should not underestimate the power of worship. And every time we worship greater than asking God for a miracle or a healing or a deliverance, the greatest thing that you and I can ask today is to know God in a deeper and deeper way. And when you know God, whatever challenge comes, you have that deep assurance, whether it's healing, a financial miracle, a family member suffering, anyone suffering, you have that assurance that it's going to be well. So as we worship today, one thing I want all of you all to trust is to know God in a deeper and deeper way. Amen? Okay. Because Brother Thiru and team to handle. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. So happy to be in the church once again, to come together in this fashion, to worship Him and praise Him and to hear the Word of God. So every Sunday is a Sunday we always uh, want to have Sundays. Amen. Let's, before we could sing, uh, we will, from the Bible, we'll take Psalm 136. Today, I'm going to read the first verse and then you all repeat up to me the second one. And we will start from the verse 1 to verse 16. Psalm 136. You can take your Bible. When you're ready, we can start reading. <coughs> Psalms 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. And his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great things, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule the night, for his mercy endures forever. And brought our Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. The Lord who set free the people of Israel, he is ready to set free us from all our anxieties, worries, and 
problems. Amen. As we worship the Lord, let's let's sing and worship Him freely, because the Bible says, "Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom." Amen. My Redeemer lives. I'm a friend of God. Love me. 
worship the Lord. Lord, I stand in your presence.
giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Our hearts. Our hearts. Our desires.
heart's desire is to see you worship. The nations worshiping you. Every tribe, every tongue. Yes, Lord. Brother Alvin, Alvin to lead us in prayer. so much brother tiru and team for leading us in a very blessed and anointed time of worship so once again i welcome all of you to our sunday morning service welcome everyone who's watching us online as well so i just want to share this thing before we get into the message i just want to share something with you uh, last night uh, i woke up at around 2 o'clock i was not able to sleep so well and i know always when i get up i'll just if i don't sleep well i'll spend time in prayer and Yesterday, as I was spending time in prayer around 2 to 30, I was reminded that something was telling me that the world could plummet into a third world war. And But again, the dynamics are a little different. If Trump comes again, there is hope and there is hope of a miracle if Trump comes again. He can avoid a third world war. But if not, we may all go into a third world war. Already, the economy is beginning to beginning to collapse in London, in the US and also it's been seen in India as well. But then God was reminding me, as people of God, if we just go into an eco economic crisis, what's going to happen? We are also going to get pulled into it. But we always remember that all through the Bible, even during a famine, even during a crisis, God's people were protected, God's people were supplied and God took care of them very very well so even before anything happens you and i should remember to begin to trust god now so in case we all go into an economic crisis we know that we'll be sustained we'll be preserved and god will definitely protect us but start believing that right now don't wait for the crisis and then muster up your faith start believing now so when the crisis comes you are not surprised you are taken care of and you are well provided and taken care of by God. Let's get into the word of God. So we've been studying this beautiful chapter, Matthew chapter 19. Last week, Jesus spoke on celibacy and he spoke on being single. He said that being celibate by staying single is not for everyone. And if you choose to be single, remember that you have to be spiritually, you have to be set apart for God. Physically, you have to exercise a lot of control and only if you can do those things, then you enter celibacy and completely not getting married and living for the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I am going to touch upon Matthew chapter 19 verses 19 to 30 and I have just divided this sermon into four very important points. Firstly, the first thing is 
will understand what does this love of money mean from the rich young ruler. Secondly, we'll understand how God looks beyond the heart. He looks beyond the external, beyond the outward and he can look at a man's heart. Thirdly, I want us to understand because it's tied into this chapter that you and I are in the last church age. So what is this church age? What is the specific church age we are going to go through? What are we currently going through? Because only when we understand can we be properly prepared and properly prepare ourselves to handle this church age. And finally, Jesus talks about rewards for following him. We will touch that and conclude with that. Let me read. Verse 18 to 20 says, He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you sh shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? So the scenario here is, that this rich young ruler is coming and asking Jesus, Jesus, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answers them and says, he answers him and tells, keep all these commandments. If you look at these commandments, they can all be categorized into one category. And all of them are relational commandments. Commandments that deal with treating others properly. Not murdering, not stealing, not slandering, not committing adultery, all have to do with treating and relational in nature. So Jesus tells this man to follow all these commandments. But when you look at the reply of this man, you know that he is definitely a Jewish leader because he says, all these commandments I already know from a small age, I already know these commandments and I have also kept these commandments. So in the society, this rich young ruler was a righteous man. It's not wrong in saying that he was a good man, he was a righteous man because he didn't do any of that murder, adultery, stealing, robbery. He didn't do any of that. So he was a righteous man in the eyes of the world. Today, when we look at people, we by their deeds and by their actions, we say, okay, he's a righteous man. Look at him, what good deeds he is doing. Look at that person, such a good man, such a committed person. But then when Jesus comes, he just sees beyond all that. What we can't see, he looks beyond and starts looking at that person's heart. He directly knows. That's why, my friends, when we go to Jesus, outwardly we can go do so many things. But he'll just directly look, pierce through and he knows what's going on in our hearts. That's why you and I, more than the outward, we have to keep an eye on what's going in our heart. What's going on in our mind? Where are our love, where are our plans, where are our purposes, we have to keep that in our mind. Then this ruler asked, he said, all this I have kept from a young age, what do I still lack? So why did he have that feeling of lack? He definitely knew that there was something that he was not doing correct. And my friends, you and I will definitely know if there is something that we are not doing correct, you will definitely know it. And this man, he asked, what do I lack? And he knew that there were, though he kept everything, there was something in his heart, something that he was doing that was disturbing him. That's why he said, he asked Jesus, what do I lack? Verse 21 to 22 says, Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. But when the man heard that saying, he went away sorrowfully for he had great possessions. So when Jesus told this man, he asked him, he told him, go sell all your possessions. So what was Jesus expecting from this man? He was not expecting some great thing or anything, but he was expecting obedience from this man and Jesus definitely expects obedience from you and for me so many times when we meet people when we talk to people we realize that some of the problems that they are in is because they have not obeyed God fully God has told them to do this but they thought okay looking at this situation this might be better God has told them to go to a specific place and they know it 
but they said no i have this circumstance that circumstance i have to take care of my family and that is what this ruler's heart was his heart was not wanting to obey god so but we can sometimes mistake we can think that when we look at this rich young ruler so is having riches wrong is having material possessions wrong no definitely not it's only to the specific rich young ruler that god is telling him not everyone in general to go sell their possessions go sell their property he is just telling this one specific ruler because he knew that this man had a love for money more than he had a love for god this man was attached to his material possessions from his reaction we know that but yet today there are so many men and women of god who give everything up for the gospel sake who sacrificially give to start orphanages who sacrificially give into the work of the ministry of sacrificially give into so many things but if you look at their lives god takes care of them much better than they could take care of themselves so he is not telling everyone that they should sell their property sell their possessions but his instruction was simple and only to this ruler his instruction was give up your worldly things and follow me but what happened this rich young ruler when god tested him tested his heart god knew his heart he failed miserably in the test that god put him through and that's how it is my friends for many of us the ruler went away very sorrowful he just walked away very sorrowful because when it came to serving god or his material possessions he chose his possessions he failed miserably and sometimes god will challenge all of us to give up something just to test and see are we holding on to that is that our entire life is our job is our finances is our parents supporting us so god will test each of you but how you do on that test will determine your future you and i must realize that if god tells us to go to another place or he tells us do this he knows he will take care and when you obey you're going to be very very blessed so many of us today my friends god asks us is there anything in your heart that is taking you a little away from god is there anything that you are attached to is there anything worldly that is disturbing you put all that aside my friend so that when that test comes when god is checking your hearts you do well not like the rich young ruler but you put god first make the right choice and you will be tremendously and wonderfully blessed and we must remember that god every time you do something for the lord jesus christ what happens in heaven there are books of remembrance and in heaven every good deed that you do is being remembered is being written down is being tracked by god god looks not only when you fail but every time you do a good thing for the lord jesus christ those books get written and one pastor was saying when he went to heaven how god showed him these books of remembrance and he said many books are empty only a little full he said if only believers take time to ask me and start doing what i tell them to do these books will become full so you and i have many things that god wants us to do begin to do that my friends we are in the last days so there's no time there's no scope to do other things so begin to start doing these works for god and your life will be happy your life will be joyful and when you meet jesus you will see so much of reward and blessing so i decided when i was listening to god help me make those books full help me not to just come with little of those books full help me to fill up all those books with the good deeds that you want me to do so once again this rich young ruler because the bible clearly says that you cannot serve two masters if you serve mammon if you serve money if you serve pleasures if you serve worldly things what is going to happen slowly the love of god will begin to go down and the love for the other worldly things will become god has put a law in place you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve mammon and you cannot serve god you cannot serve pleasures and you cannot serve god you will definitely 
if you begin to like pleasures, you will end up unconsciously hating God slowly. That's the reason why many people backslide in today's time. But if you begin to love God more, you begin to put God more, all these pleasures, these material things will become nothing. You will just know, okay, if I lose this place today, God will give me 10 more places. If I lose this for the gospel, say, God knows how to take care of me. Your house, your jobs, your family is not your security. God is your security and we must be established on that. Just a few more verses. Verse 23 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Look at the language that Jesus uses. He says, Assuredly, surely I am telling you that a rich man, those who love riches cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus uses very strong words. Those who love riches cannot use the kingdom of God, enter the kingdom of God. Then he uses an analogy. He says, a camel cannot go through that needle's eye. Such a huge camel, the needle cannot go through. So it's basically an impossible situation. But then he says, for God, all this is possible. For the love of, the, of money, the love of mammon is a dangerous thing that you and I have to take heed of, especially in these days. I want to just touch upon, since we are talking about the love of money, I just want to take you through this, uh, yeah, take you through this map. Uh, this is our modern day Turkey or Asia Minor. And why I wanted to show you this map is because if you look at the seven churches that are mentioned in the first three chapters of Revelation, first three chapters talk about seven churches. All of these churches, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Smyrna, Ephesus and Laodicea, all these churches existed at one particular time in Turkey. And the only church that is a secret church today is the church of Philadelphia, the church which has no criticism from the Lord Jesus Christ. So at one particular time, all these churches existed. And these churches, seven churches, are types of churches that exist today. Any church that you think of, the CSI, the Pentecostal, any church will fall under one of these categories. And it's interesting, I don't know how many of you uh, were there for our revelation study. If you remember, do you know what the fault of the church at Laodicea was? Okay, I think you'll have forgotten. Don't worry, I'll just refresh your memories right now. So, at one particular stage in history, one of these, though all the churches existed all the time, one particular church dominated that particular period, that particular era. If you look at the next slide, I've just quickly put that across so that you understand where we are today in God's calendar. AD 30 to 100, Ephesus, seven churches existed, but Ephesus dominated that AD. Smyrna, 100 to 313 AD, was the dominant church. Pergamum, the wilderness period, Numbers, was the dominant church. Thyatira, AD 600 to 1517, was Thyatira. Then Sardis, AD 1517 to 1648. Then Philadelphia, until 1900. And from 1900, we are in the Laodicean church. My friends, you and I are not in any other church age. We are in the Laodicean church age. What is the dominant culture of that age? There are three things that I have listed out that are dominant in the Laodicean church age. And interesting, if you read Revelation chapter 1 to 22, after Revelation chapter 3, there is no mention of the church at all. Only why? Because we know after we are in the last church, the last stage, the Laodicean church, there is no mention of the church. Why? Because the only thing that is left is the rapture of the church. Chapter 3 ends with the church. No mention of the church till chapter 21 where the second coming of Jesus and the last church, the rapture happens. Chapter 4, Revelation talks about the throne room. Why? 
you and I at the rapture will be taken into the throne room before the Antichrist manifest. So three important things you must know today. It's very important as believers that we know the first thing of this Laodicean church is apostasy. What is apostasy? Apostasy is nothing but wrong doctrines, wrong teachings. What people will come and do, I don't want to mention names. Even today in Bangalore, there are 10-15 cult groups that I can mention names. I don't want to create anything. I've mentioned the names before, but others told me don't avoid that. So I don't want to mention. So what they take, they just delete one or two scriptures and they form a doctrine out of it. They take one small scripture, they twist it or tweak it a little, but then slowly they can lead you into error and you can just be swept away and carried away with false doctrines. It will just a small thing, it will be so interesting, so nice. But in a second, they will carry you away into false doctrine. That's one reason why we teach the Bible day after day. So when a false doctrine crops up, immediately your antennas will go and you will not fall for that false doctrine. That's why Paul writes in 1 Timothy verse 4, 1 he says, Now the Spirit expressing expressively, it expressively means clearly says that in the latter days some will depart from the faith, from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So this church age that you and I are in, the Laodicean church age, the greatest thing that we will see is apostasy. And my friends, I can tell you, there's apostasy going all over the world right now. So many believers getting carried away. Secondly, the Laodicean church were run by merchants. Very rich businessmen were there. They will come, they will contribute abundantly into the church. They will help build churches, buildings, many properties they gave. But what happened, they started controlling the church. They started dictating, telling the church, that the church has to do this, the church has to do this. So they were run, Laodicea was a church run by the people. And where is Jesus? Jesus is outside. He says, I am standing and knocking outside the door. If anyone opens, I will enter. So Revelation chapter 2 always says, He that has a ear, let him hear. It's not only to the churches, but it's also to every individual believer. So the Laodicean church was run by the people, but no room for God. They did not listen to the voice of Jesus and run the church. Everything was based on natural things that they did. So that is the church we are in. And today, many churches, if you notice, are run by the people, not by the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, that is wrong. You and I must always listen to the voice of Jesus and then run and do as he tells us, not only in the church, but also our personal lives. Finally, the third thing that we have to be careful is, Jesus says to the church at Laodicea, because you are neither hot nor you are cold, in Revelation chapter 3, because you are not hot, you are not cold, I will chew you and spew you out, literally cast you out. Those are strong words that Jesus uses. So my friends, we don't have the luxury of just being Namke Vaste Christians, just going to church and coming back. No, my friends, not in this age. We can't do that. We don't have the luxury of that. You and I cannot be lukewarm. We cannot be cold. We have to be all the time on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to, our spirits have to be burning for the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we do that? We just start by spending quiet time in God's presence. Firstly, if there's any sin, we repent immediately, put that sin aside. Secondly, we study God's word. And thirdly, we walk in the light. We stay close to Jesus. We praise Him. We glorify Him. We spend quiet time with Him. And if you do that, my friends, slowly, if you are not on fire, if you are cold, you will start getting warmer, warmer till you burn. So the Laodicean church age, three things that will dominate the spirit, apostasy, false doctrine, Secondly, people will control the church, but Jesus is outside the church, he is outside our lives, he is not controlling our lives. Allow Jesus to take over every area of our life and then don't be lukewarm my friends, this is not the time for you and me to be lukewarm. Be on fire for God, dedicate your life to Jesus, stay close to him because you know that we are in the last church. After this, 
There is no mention of the church. No other church. Pergamos, Thyatira, all those faces gone. We are in the last church, the last time. So you and I must not be scared. You must be joyous that Jesus has chosen you and me to be born in a time and an age like this. That means he expects a lot from us. Be faithful to him. Do what he tells you to do. Put everything aside. Live for the Lord Jesus wholeheartedly. Finally, a few more verses and we are going to close. I will quickly go through this. So be patient with me just a little while and we will close. So, so Jesus again he says, So the disciples tell them who can inherit the kingdom of God. Because there were so many rich men. There was Zacchaeus. There was Joseph of Arimathea. There was Barnabas. There was other rich rulers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob were all very rich. But the only differentiating factor is all of them, though they were rich, they loved God. Abraham habitually fellowshiped with God. He Every place he went, he built an altar for God. He gave so much to God. That was the differentiating factor. David, he wanted to build a temple. He stored up so much of money for Solomon to build the temple. So where their hearts were, Abraham, David and all these men, they put God first. They honored God and gave their first food, their best food. They gave everything to God. You and I must honor God with our first food and in everything. So that that love of money is not that we are trusting God as our source and supply. Finally, then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of His glory, you will have, you who have followed me, will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and last will be first. So to the disciples, the twelve disciples, Jesus promised that they are going to rule the twelve tribes of Israel. But what about all those? It says those who leave father, those who leave, that means if I leave Sugenya, will I get hundred more Sugenyas? <laughs> so, no, no, it's not like if you leave your mom and dad, will get hundred more moms and dads. No, it's not like that. What it means is that when you leave things, when you make a sacrifice for Jesus, Scholars believe, I was reading, what does this mean? Otherwise, every man who leaves one house should have 100 houses, should have 100 wives, should have 100 parents. It's not like that. But it means that when you sacrifice your time, your talent, your treasure, and when you give to the Lord Jesus, when you do things for God, and if God tells you go to a different place, and it's difficult to go there, you think your family, your home, everything is there. But if God tells you to leave and go, what is going to happen? You're going to have a sense of joy. You're going to have a peace that in the natural you can never receive. You're going to be full of a joy and a fire and a joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. And that, my friends, is that hundredfold return that God gives. But in the next life, you're going to have an abundant entry. Books are going to be read about. You're going to have a glorious entry into the kingdom of God. But in this life, you're going to have a peace that passes understanding. You're going to have a joy knowing that you are doing God's will. You are going to be full of peace that nowhere else you can get. Always, my friends, remember these two things. If God tells you to stay in a place, whatever happens in that place, He will still help you, He will still give you peace and He will give you a provision in that place. But if God tells you to move to a place, whatever happens, you are not going to see your provision in that particular place. You are not going to be happy in that particular place. If He tells you to go to a difficult place, even if it's tough, you'll start experiencing joy, you'll start experiencing peace and you'll be full of glory. Let's just quickly summarize and then we'll close with prayer. So today we looked at not having love for money like the rich young ruler. Remember, God doesn't look at your outside. He can look at what's going on in your heart. Get your heart's absolutely right with God. Thirdly, Remember, we are in the last church age, 
the last church no more mention of the church no more mention of the believer throughout the tribulation till the second coming in chapter 21 so take heed don't give in to apostate don't let money rule over you let jesus guide and rule you finally don't be lukewarm be on fire for god and finally remember that god rewards let's put everything aside and follow Jesus with all your heart. He'll reward you in this life. And he'll definitely reward you in the next life. Let's just close with a word of prayer. I'll quickly pray for the tithe and the offering. And then we'll just close. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you Father God. For this blessed and beautiful day Lord. We pray for everyone who's contributed physically. Everyone who's contributed online Lord. Sacrificially Lord. Bless the hands that have given, Lord. They are saying that you are their source, you are their supply, Lord. Show them, Lord. Show them, Lord, that you will take care of them, Lord. You will supply for them. Lord, I pray that you bless everyone, Lord, to such an extent. They have enough for themselves, more than sufficient for themselves, and more than enough for every good work in Jesus' name. Father God, we also thank you, Lord, for showing us these great truths, Father God, about the Laodicean church, Lord, about the times that we are in, Father God. Father God, if anyone has anything that is pricking them, Lord, anything they feel that they have to lay aside, Father God, I just pray that you will strengthen them, Father God, to lay aside everything today and never take it back again. Let them make a decision before God and before man today, Lord. That they put aside every worldly temptation, every worldly pleasure, Lord, every love of money. Let it be destroyed today by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, Father God. Let us remember we are in the last church age, Lord. You are coming soon, Lord. Help us not to have fear, but help us to be filled with joy, eagerly expecting your arrival, Father God. Father God, we also remember, Lord, today I was reminded, Lord, there are some of us who are seated here, maybe some online, whose life has been hindered, Father God. That your plans for them have not come to pass, Lord. I see that there are hindrances, Lord. You want to lift them up higher, Lord. But something is keeping them bound, Father God. Father God, I just pray that every single attack over them, every single hindrance, over their growth and their future be destroyed today in Jesus' name, Father God. Father God, we just believe, Lord, as we enter uncertain times, Lord, we are certain that you are there with us, Lord. You are taking care of us, Lord. You are going to watch over us, Father God. Father God, I lastly just want to close with praying for healing, Lord. I pray, Lord, anyone who is trusting you for a healing, Lord, let them know you today. As Jehovah Rophe, God who heals, Lord. God who does creative miracles in their bodies, Father God. Let bodies be healed, Father God. Let miracles happen as we are praying today, Lord. Let miracles happen online, Father God. Father God, I pray for our family members, Lord. Those who are struggling, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you would visit them, Father God. You will heal them, Lord. And you will bring them out of every sickness in Jesus' name. Father God, I have such an assurance, Lord, that healing is nothing for you, Lord. I have such an assurance that you are going to heal our family members, Lord. I have such an assurance that you are going to heal us. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. It is your desire to heal, Lord. Let everyone be healed today in Jesus' name. Once again, Father God, we thank you. For your word that has come so clearly today, Lord. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for... <laughs> listening patiently and wish you a very blessed week. God bless you and also uh, thank you everyone who's joined us online. God bless you.
Thank you so much, Brother Thiru and team, for leading us in a very blessed and anointed time of worship. So, once again, I welcome all of you to our Sunday morning service. Welcome everyone who's watching us online as well. So, I just want to share this thing. Before we get into the message, I just want to share something with you. Uh, last night, uh, I woke up at around 2 o'clock. I was not able to sleep so well. And I know always when I get up, I'll just, if I don't sleep well, I'll spend time in prayer and yesterday as I was spending time in prayer around 2 to 30 I was reminded that something was telling me that the world could plummet into a third world war and but again the dynamics are a little different if Trump comes again there is hope and there is hope of a miracle if Trump comes again he can avoid a third world war but if not we may all go into a third world war already the economy is begin to, beginning to collapse in London, in the US and also it's been seen in India as well. But then God was reminding me, as people of God, if we just go into an eco economic crisis, what's going to happen? We are also going to get pulled into it. But we always remember that all through the Bible, even during a famine, even during a crisis, God's people were protected, God's people were supplied. And God took care of them very, very well. So even before anything happens, you and I should remember to begin to trust God now. So in case we all go into an economic crisis, we know that we'll be sustained, we'll be preserved and God will definitely protect us. But start believing that right now. Don't wait for the crisis and then muster up your faith. Start believing now. So when the crisis comes, you're not surprised, you're taken care of. And you are well provided and taken care by God. Let's get into the word of God. So we have been studying this beautiful chapter. Matthew chapter 19. Last week Jesus spoke on celibacy. And he spoke on being single. He said that being celibate by staying single is not for everyone. And if you choose to be single. Remember that you have to be spiritually you have to be set apart for God physically you have to exercise a lot of control and only if you can do those things then you enter celibacy and completely not getting married and living for the Lord Jesus Christ today I'm going to touch upon Matthew chapter 19 verses 19 to 30 and I've just divided this sermon into four very important points firstly the first thing is, we'll understand what does this love of money mean from the rich young ruler. Secondly, we'll understand how God looks beyond the heart. He looks beyond the external, beyond the outward and he can look at a man's heart. Thirdly, I want us to understand because it's tied into this chapter that you and I are in the last church age. So what is this church age? What is the specific church age we are going to go through? What are we currently going through? Because only when we understand can we be properly prepared and properly prepare ourselves to handle this church age. And finally, Jesus talks about rewards for following him. We'll touch that and conclude with that. Let me read. Verse 18 to 20 says, He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother and you sh shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? So the scenario here is that this rich young ruler is coming and asking Jesus, Jesus, what do I need to do to e inherit eternal life? Jesus answers them and says, He answers him and tells, Keep all these commandments. If you look at these commandments, they can all be categorized into one category. And all of them are relational commandments. Commandments that deal with treating others properly. Not murdering, not stealing, not slandering, not committing adultery. All have to do with treating and relational in nature. So Jesus tells this man to follow all these commandments. But when you look at the reply of this man, you know, that he is definitely a Jewish leader because he says all these commandments I already know from a small age I already know these commandments and 
I have also kept these commandments. So in the society, this rich young ruler was a righteous man. It's not wrong in saying that he was a good man, he was a righteous man because he didn't do any of that murder, adultery, stealing, robbery. He didn't do any of that. So he was a righteous man in the eyes of the world. Today, when we look at people, we by their deeds and by their actions, we say, okay, he's a righteous man. Look at him, what good deeds he is doing. Look at that person, such a good man, such a committed person. But then when Jesus comes, he just sees beyond all that. What we can't see, he looks beyond and starts looking at that person's heart. He directly knows. That's why, my friends, when we go to Jesus, outwardly we can go do so many things. But he'll just directly look, pierce through and he knows what's going on in our hearts. That's why you and I, more than the outward, we have to keep an eye on what's going in our heart. What's going on in our mind? Where are our love? Where are our plans? Where are our purposes? We have to keep that in our mind. Then this ruler asked, he said, all this I have kept from a young age. What do I still lack? So why did he have that feeling of lack? He definitely knew that there was something that he was not doing correct. And my friends, you and I will definitely know if there is something that we are not doing correct, you will definitely know it. And this man, he asked, what do I lack? And he knew that there were, though he kept everything, there was something in his heart, something that he was doing that was disturbing him. That's why he said, he asked Jesus, what do I lack? Verse 21 to 22 says, Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. But when the man heard that saying, he went away sorrowfully for he had great possessions. So when Jesus told this man, he asked him, he told him, go sell all your possessions. So what was Jesus expecting from this man? He was not expecting some great thing or anything, but he was expecting obedience from this man and Jesus definitely expects obedience from you and for me so many times when we meet people when we talk to people we realize that some of the problems that they are in is because they have not obeyed God fully God has told them to do this but they thought okay looking at this situation this might be better God has told them to go to a specific place and they know it but they said, no, I have this circumstance, that circumstance. I have to take care of my family. And that is what this ruler's heart was. His heart was not wanting to obey God. So, but we can sometimes mistake. We can think that when we look at this rich young ruler, so is having riches wrong? Is having material possessions wrong? No, definitely not. It's only to the specific rich young ruler that God is telling him, not everyone in general to go sell their possessions, go sell their property. He's just telling this one specific ruler because he knew that this man had a love for money more than he had a love for God. This man was attached to his material possessions from his reaction. We know that. But yet today, there are so many men and women of God who give everything up for the gospel's sake, who sacrificially give to start orphanages, who sacrificially give into the work of the ministry, who sacrificially give into so many things. But if you look at their lives, God takes care of them much better than they could take care of themselves. So he's not telling everyone that they should sell their property, sell their possessions, but his instruction was simple and only to this ruler. His instruction was, Give up your worldly things and follow me. But what happened? This rich young ruler, when God tested him, tested his heart, God knew his heart, he failed miserably in the test that God put him through. And that's how it is, my friends, for many of us. The ruler went away very sorrowful. He just walked away very sorrowful because when it came to serving God or his material positions, he chose his possessions, he failed miserably and sometimes God will challenge all of us to give up something just to test and see 
are we holding on to that is that our entire life is our job is our finances is our parents supporting us so god will test each of you but how you do on that test will determine your future you and i must realize that if god tells us to go to another place or he tells us do this he knows he will take care and when you obey you're going to be very very blessed so many of us today my friends god asks us is there anything in your heart that is taking you a little away from god is there anything that you are attached to is there anything worldly that is disturbing you put all that aside my friend so that when that test comes when god is checking your hearts you do well not like the rich young ruler but you put god first make the right choice and you will be tremendously and wonderfully blessed and we must remember that god every time you do something for the lord jesus christ what happens in heaven there are books of remembrance and in heaven every good deed that you do is being remembered is being written down is being tracked by god god looks not only when you fail but every time you do a good thing for the lord jesus christ those books get written and one pastor was saying when he went to heaven how god showed him these books of remembrance and he said many books are empty only a little full he said if only believers take time to ask me and start doing what i tell them to do these books will become full so you and i have many things that god wants us to do begin to do that my friends we are in the last days so there's no time there's no scope to do other things so begin to start doing these works for god and your life will be happy your life will be joyful and when you meet jesus you see so much of reward and blessing so i decided when i was listening that god help me make those books full help me not to just come with little of those books full help me to fill up all those books with the good deeds that you want me to do so once again this rich young ruler because the bible clearly says that you cannot serve two masters if you serve mammon if you serve money if you serve pleasures if you serve worldly things what is going to happen slowly the love of god will begin to go down and the love for the other worldly things will become god has put a law in place you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve mammon and you cannot serve god you cannot serve pleasures and you cannot serve god you will definitely if you begin to like pleasures you will end up unconsciously hating god slowly that's the reason why many people backslide in today's time but if you begin to love god more you begin to put god more all these pleasures these material things will become nothing you will just know okay if i lose this place today god will give me 10 more places if i lose this for the gospel say god knows how to take care of me your house your jobs your family is not your security god is your security and we must be established on that just a few more verses verse 23 says then jesus said to his disciples assuredly i say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven and again i say to you it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of god when his disciples heard it they were greatly astonished saying who then can be saved but jesus looked at them and said to them with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible look at the language that jesus uses he says assuredly surely i am telling you that a rich man those who love riches cannot enter the kingdom of god jesus uses very strong words those who love riches cannot use the kingdom of god enter the kingdom of god then he uses an analogy he says a camel cannot go through that needle's eye such a huge camel the needle cannot go through so it's basically an impossible situation but then he says for god all this is possible for the love of the of money the love of mammon is a dangerous thing that you and i have to take heed of especially in this days i want to just touch upon since we are talking about the love of money i just want to take you through this uh, yeah take you through this map 
this is our modern day Turkey or Asia Minor. And why I wanted to show you this map is because if you look at the seven churches that are mentioned in the first three chapters of Revelation, first three chapters talk about seven churches. All of these churches, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Smyrna, Ephesus and Laodicea, all these churches existed at one particular time in Turkey. And the only church that is a secret church today is the church of Philadelphia, the church which has no criticism from the Lord Jesus Christ. So at one particular time, all these churches existed. And these churches, seven churches, are types of churches that exist today. Any church that you think of, the CSI, the Pentecostal, any church will fall under one of these categories. And it's interesting, I don't know how many of you uh, were there for our revelation study. If you remember, do you know what the fault of the church at Laodicea was? Okay, I think you all have forgotten. Don't worry, I'll just refresh your memories right now. So, at one particular stage in history, one of these, though all the churches existed all the time, one particular church dominated that particular period, that particular era. If you look at the next slide, I've just quickly put that across so that you understand where we are today in God's calendar. AD 30 to 100, Ephesus, seven churches existed. But Ephesus dominated that AD. Smyrna, 100 to 313 AD, was the dominant church. Pergamum, the wilderness period, Numbers, was the dominant church. Thyatira, AD 600 to 1517, was Thyatira. Then Sardis, AD 1517 to 1648. Then Philadelphia, until 1900. And from 1900, we are in the Laodicean church. My friends, you and I are not in any other church age. We are in the Laodicean church age. What is the dominant culture of that age? There are three things that I have listed out that are dominant in the Laodicean church age. And interesting, if you read Revelation chapter 1 to 22, after Revelation chapter 3, there is no mention of the church at all. Only why? Because we know after we are in the last church, the last stage, the Laodicean church, there is no mention of the church. Why? Because the only thing that is left is the rapture of the church. Chapter 3 ends with the church. No mention of the church till chapter 21 where the second coming of Jesus and the last church, the rapture happens. Chapter 4, Revelation talks about the throne room. Why? You and I at the rapture will be taken into the throne room before the Antichrist manifests. So three important things you must know today. It's very important as believers that we know the first thing of this Laodicean church is apostasy. What is apostasy? Apostasy is nothing but wrong doctrines, wrong teachings. What people will come and do, I don't want to mention names. Even today in Bangalore, there are 10-15 cult groups that I can mention names. I don't want to create anything. I've mentioned the names before, but others told me don't avoid that. So I don't want to mention so what they take, they just delete one or two scriptures and they form a doctrine out of it. They take one small scripture, they twist it or tweak it a little, but then slowly they can lead you into error and you can just be swept away and carried away with false doctrines. It will just a small thing, it will be so interesting, so nice. But in a second, they will carry you away into false doctrine. That's one reason why we teach the Bible day after day. So when a false doctrine crops up, immediately your antennas will go and you will not fall for that false doctrine. That's why Paul writes in 1 Timothy verse 4, 1 he says, Now the Spirit expressing expressively, it expressively means clearly says that in the latter days some will depart from the faith, from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So this church age that you and I are in, the Laodicean church age, the greatest thing that we'll see is apostasy. And my friends, I can tell you, there's apostasy going all over the world right now. So many believers getting carried away. Secondly, the Laodicean church were run by merchants. Very rich businessmen were there. They will come, they'll contribute abundantly into the church. They'll help build churches, buildings, many properties they gave. But what happened? 
they started controlling the church they started dictating telling the church that the church has to do this the church has to do this so they were run laodicea was a church run by the people and where is jesus jesus is outside he says i'm standing and knocking outside the door if anyone opens i will enter so revelation chapter 2 always says he that has a ear let him hear it's not only to the churches but it's also to every individual believer so the laodicean church was run by the people but no room for god they did not listen to the voice of jesus and run the church everything were based on natural things that they did so that is the church we are in and today many churches if you notice are run by the people not by the lord jesus christ my friends that is wrong you and i must always listen to the voice of jesus and then run and do as he tells us not only in the church but also our personal lives finally the third thing that we have to be careful is jesus says to the church at laodicea because you are neither hot nor you are cold in revelation chapter 3 because you are not hot you are not cold i will chew you and spew you out literally cast you out those are strong words that jesus uses so my friends we don't have the luxury of just being namke vaste christians just going to church and coming back no my friends not in this age we can't do that we don't have the luxury of that you and i cannot be lukewarm we cannot be cold we have to be all the time on fire for the lord jesus christ we have to our spirits have to be burning for the lord jesus christ. how do we do that we just start by spending quiet time in god's presence firstly if there's any sin we repent immediately put that sin aside secondly we study god's word and thirdly we walk in the light we stay close to jesus we praise him we glorify him we spend quiet time with him and if you do that my friends slowly if you are not on fire if you are cold you will start getting warmer warmer till you burn so the laodicean church age three things that will dominate the spirit apostasy false doctrine secondly people will control the church but jesus is outside the church he is outside our lives he is not controlling our lives allow jesus to take over every area of our life and then don't be lukewarm my friends this is not the time for you and me to be lukewarm be on fire for god dedicate your life to jesus stay close to him because you know that we are in the last church after this there is no mention of the church no other church pergamus thyatira all those faces gone we are in the last church the last time so you and i must not be scared we must be joyous that jesus has chosen you and me to be born in a time and an age like this that means he expects a lot from us be faithful to him do what he tells you to do put everything aside live for the lord jesus wholeheartedly finally a few more verses and we're going to close i'll quickly go through this so be patient with me just a little while and we'll close so so jesus again he says so the disciples tell them who can inherit the kingdom of god because there were so many rich men there was zacchaeus there was joseph of arimathea there was barnabas there was other rich lo- r- rulers abraham isaac jacob were all very rich but the only differentiating factor is all of them though they were rich they loved god abraham habitually fellowship with god he every place he went he built an altar for god he gave so much to god that was the differentiating factor david he wanted to build a temple he stored up so much of money for solomon to build the temple so where their hearts were abraham david and all these men they put god first they honored god and gave their first fruit their best fruit they gave everything to god you and i must honor god with our first fruit and in everything so that that love of money is not that we are trusting god as our source and supply finally then peter answered and said to him See we have left all and followed you therefore what shall we have so jesus said to them assuredly i say to you that in the regeneration when the son of man sits on the throne of his glory you will have you who have followed me 
will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and last will be first. So to the disciples, the twelve disciples, Jesus promised that they are going to rule the twelve tribes of Israel. But what about all those? It says those who leave father, those who leave. That means if I leave Sugenya, will I get 100 more Sugenyas? <laughs> so, no, no, it's not like if you leave your mom and dad, we'll get 100 more moms and dads. No, it's not like that. What it means is that when you leave things, when you make a sacrifice for Jesus, scholars believe, I was reading, what does this mean? Otherwise, every man who leaves one house should have 100 houses, should have 100 wives, should have 100 parents. It's not like that. But it means that when you sacrifice your time, your talent, your treasure, and when you give to the Lord Jesus, when you do things for God, and if God tells you go to a different place, and it's difficult to go there, you think your family, your home, everything is there, but if God tells you to leave and go, what is going to happen? You're going to have a sense of joy. You're going to have a peace that in the natural you can never receive. You're going to be full of a joy and a fire and a joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. And that, my friends, is that hundredfold return that God gives. But in the next life, you're going to have an abundant entry. Books are going to be read about. You're going to have a glorious entry into the kingdom of God. But in this life, you're going to have a peace that passes understanding. You're going to have a joy knowing that you're doing God's will. You're going to be full of peace that nowhere else you can get. Always, my friends, remember these two things. If God tells you to stay in a place, whatever happens in that place, He'll still help you, He'll still give you peace and He'll give you a provision in that place. But if God tells you to move to a place, whatever happens, you're not going to see your provision in that particular place. You're not going to be happy in that particular place. If He tells you to go to a difficult place, even if it's tough, you'll start experiencing joy, you'll start experiencing peace and you'll be full of glory. Let's just quickly summarize and then we'll close with prayer. So today we looked at not having love for money like the rich young ruler. Remember, God doesn't look at your outside. He can look at what's going on in your heart. Get your heart's absolutely right with God. Thirdly, remember, we are in the last church age, the last church. No more mention of the church, no more mention of the believer throughout the tribulation till the second coming in chapter 21. So, take heed. Don't give in to apostate. Don't let money rule over you. Let Jesus guide and rule you. Finally, don't be lukewarm. Be on fire for God. And finally, remember that God rewards. Let's put everything aside and follow Jesus with all your heart. He'll reward you in this life and He'll definitely reward you in the next life. Let's just Close with a word of prayer. I'll quickly pray for the tithe and the offering and then we'll just close. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Father God, for this blessed and beautiful day, Lord. We pray for everyone who's contributed physically, everyone who's contributed online, Lord, sacrificially, Lord, bless the hands that have given, Lord. They are saying that you are their source, you are their supply, Lord. Show them, Lord. Show them, Lord, that you will take care of them, Lord. You will supply for them. Lord, I pray that you bless everyone, Lord, to such an extent they have enough for themselves, more than sufficient for themselves and more than enough for every good work in Jesus' name. Father God, we also thank you, Lord, for showing us these great truths, Father God, about the Laodicean church, Lord, about the times that we are in, Father God. Father God, if anyone as anything that is pricking them, Lord, anything they feel that they have to lay aside, Father God, I just pray that you will strengthen them, Father God, to lay aside everything today and never take it back again. Let them make a decision before God and before man today, Lord, that they put aside every worldly temptation, every worldly pleasure, Lord, every love of money, let it be destroyed today. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, Father God, let us remember we are in the last church age, Lord. You are coming soon, Lord. 
help us not to have fear but help us to be filled with joy eagerly expecting your arrival father god father god we also remember lord today i was reminded lord there are some of us who are seated here maybe some online whose life has been hindered father god that the your plans for them have not come to pass lord i see that there are hindrances lord you want to lift them up higher lord but something is keeping them bound father god father god i just pray that every single attack over them every single hindrance over their growth and their future be destroyed today in jesus name father god father god we just believe lord as we enter uncertain times lord we are certain that you are there with us lord you are taking care of us lord you're going to watch over us father god father god i lastly just want to close with praying for healing lord i pray lord anyone who's trusting you for a healing lord let them know you today as jehova rofe god who heals lord god who does creative miracles in their bodies father god let bodies be healed father god let miracles happen as we are praying today lord let miracles happen online father god Father God I pray for our family members Lord those who are struggling Lord I just pray Lord that you would visit them Father God you'll heal them Lord and you'll bring them out of every sickness in Jesus name Father God I have such an assurance Lord that healing is nothing for you Lord I have such an assurance that you're going to heal our family members Lord I have such an assurance that you're going to heal us nothing is impossible for you lord it is your desire to heal lord let everyone be healed today in jesus name once again father god we thank you for your word that has come so clearly today lord we give you all the glory in jesus name amen now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of the father and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us both now and forevermore in Jesus name amen amen thank you everyone for <laughs> listening patiently and wish you a very blessed week god bless you and also uh, thank you everyone who's joined us online god bless you